Labor Day is around the corner and corn on the cob is sure to be a staple around many a cookout this coming weekend. While corn on the cob is common today, did you know that it actually used to be a very rare treat? Lend me an ear and you will hear the story of the creative cob as we check out our favorite stalker. Ted here. In most of the world, the word corn simply refers to any type of grain. It's a generic term. While the word maize refers to the silky shucked ear that we know, even though it is a distinctly new world crop, corn now grows on every single continent in this world except for Antarctica. Native Americans first cultivated corn in a form we wouldn't even recognize today about 9,000 years ago. A type of grass, the earliest corn didn't have what we'd see as a cob, but the Mesoamericans were skilled farmers and bred the grain into a more sumptuous cereal. Still, almost all corn was used to make meal or flour, though archaeologists have uncovered evidence of corn being popped as a foodstuff around 1000 BC. Fast forward 2000 years and the Iroquois Indians have taken corn to the northeast, further breeding it to be able to mature faster so they could harvest it before winter. They primarily made soup or pudding from the corn, which is pretty much what the pilgrims saw upon their first arrival. Yep, most corn was made into meal, which was then used to make a type of porridge that was referred to as hasty pudding. They had to do this because the sugars would turn into starch so quickly. But there was a magical two-day window. You see, between 18 to 20 days after silking, the meal corn enters its milk stage where the kernels are filled with a sweet liquid. Only during this stage would roasted corn on the cob be tasty. As such, it was a true rare delicacy. With the advent of sweet corn in the early 19th century, the preparation of boiling corn on the cob came into vogue. Still, as recently as 40 years ago, there were few varieties of corn that would maintain their sugars before they turned to starch more than just a couple of days after harvest. So you had to make sure that if you're going to make corn on the cob, it had to have been within two days of picking those pesky ears. Today, you can store your ears of corn in the fridge, please, for up to five or so days before the sugars begin to convert to starch. Now, I want to give a shout out today also to noted food historian David Shields, who really was very helpful and, and very generous with his time in giving me some pretty important information for today's video. And he has come out with a really fascinating book, The Culinarians, which looks at the first um, uh, era of American fine dining. And it is a blast to read. If you're interested, there's a link below. I hope that this has been fun and informative. For more fun recipes, videos, and travel tips, please check out our website, historybytheplate.com. Oh, and subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. It is fun and free. Happy cooking.